Hi everyone, it's Mr. Kwan here. Today we're going to talk about applications of functions in business and economics. Let's talk about some definitions first. The profit a firm or company makes on its products is the difference between the amount it receives from sales, otherwise sometimes called revenue, and its cost. If X units are produced and sold, we can write P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X where p of x is equal to the profit from sale of x number of units, r is the total revenue from sale of x number of units, and c of x is equal to the total cost of production and sale of x number of units. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a really, really bad memory, and so sometimes mnemonic devices help me remember things. And if you don't know what a mnemonic device is, it's just something, sometimes it could be like a poem or an acronym that helps you remember something. So for me, sometimes the way that I remember this equation is by taking the first letter of each of these and then also that negative sign and I create a sentence out of it. So the sentence I created is people read negative comments. If you have some kind of social media, like a Facebook or something, you know that that is a very true statement. If you read through the comments, people tend to focus on the negative ones rather than the, the positive ones. And that's just, you know, sometimes the reality. So the way that I remember the profit function equation is I use the mnemonic device, people read negative comments. So in general, revenue is found by using the equation Revenue equals price per unit times the number of units sold. For example, um, you know, if I'm selling a bottle of water for $2 and I sold 20 bottles, then my revenue would equal uh, $2 times 20 bottles, so that, uh, that would equal $40. So that's just a quick example. The cost is composed of two parts. There's something called the fixed costs and the variable costs. So the fixed costs, such as depreciation, rent, utilities, and so on, remain constant regardless of the number of units produced. Variable costs are those directly related to the number of units produced. So the overall cost is equal to the variable cost plus the fixed costs, okay? So that was a lot of definitions. Let's talk about an example to kind of solidify these ideas. So example one says, Mr. Kwan wants to open up a boba stand in front of his house. If you don't know what boba is, boba are these tiny delicious Asian balls that are made from tapioca and they make all of life's problems disappear, only momentarily. But still, the cost to construct the wooden stand and the business license that Mr. Kwan needs comes out to $5,000. Now, this $5,000 is what we refer to as the fixed costs because uh, no matter what, that's not going to change. Like the cost of the business license and the cost to make that wooden stand is going to be $5,000. The cost to make each cup of boba is a dollar and 25 cents. And Mr. Kwan sells each cup for $3 and 75 cents. So now this price here is related to the variable costs. Um, that, that number itself is not the variable cost, but it's used to find the variable cost. Okay, so the first part, part A asks us to create the profit function for this scenario. Now remember, people read negative comments. And so in order to create the profit function, we need the individual components. So let's think about the revenue function first. And remember, the revenue function is the price per unit times the number of units sold. So in that case, or in this case, the price per unit is $3.75. And 
I don't know how many units I'm selling, so we're going to assign that a variable, and I'm going to call it x. And let me just erase that dollar sign there. So I have the revenue function is equal to 3.75 times the number of units that I end up selling. Okay, now let's see if we can't come up with the cost function. So c of x is equal to, we want to think about the variable costs. Now, the we see in the problem that for every cup I make, it costs me a dollar and 25 cents per cup of boba that I make. And so the variable cost is going to be 1.25 times the number of cups that I sell. So again, we're going to, because I don't know how many cups I'm selling, I'm going to assign that the variable x. And then we know that no matter what, I'm going to end up um, paying the fixed costs of $5,000. So my cost function is 1.25x plus 5,000. Let me just label these parts. So this here is my fixed costs. And this part here, oops, sorry, I made a mistake. So that part there is my variable costs, and this part here is my fixed costs. Okay, so we've created our two functions that we need to finally create our profit function. So let's come back and we know that our profit function is equal to our revenue function, which is 3.75x minus, now this is very important. You want to make sure that you're subtracting off the entire function. And so you wanna put like either a bracket or parentheses here. And I'll tell you the importance of that in just a second. So let me put inside the parentheses the cost function. And the, the reason why it's so important to make sure that you put those parentheses is because you need to distribute that negative sign into both of these terms. So if we're going to go ahead and simplify our profit function, we have 3.75x minus 1.25x and then minus 5,000. And we can actually simplify that, right? We have some like terms there. And so 3.75 minus 1.25 is 2.5x. And then minus 5,000. Now, basically what this is saying is the amount of money that we're going to end up profiting, we have to subtract 5,000 from that because... Um, those are our fixed costs, right? That's the cost that I need to build the stand as well as the cost to buy a business license. And then after we've basically taken the cost that we're selling each cup at and subtracted off the variable cost, we're basically making $2.50 per cup that we sell. All right, hopefully that makes sense. We'll go over a few more examples later, but this is our final answer. This is our profit function, P of X, all right? Okay, so B says if Mr. Kwan sells 100 units or 100 cups of boba, what will his profits be? So. All that is asking is it's asking us to evaluate P of 100, where, you know, that's our input, and then the output is the amount of profit that we make in dollars. So all I'm going to do is, where I originally saw the X, I'm going to plug in 100. And so 2.5 times 100 is 250. And then we want to subtract off 5,000. And so that ends up being 
you might be asking yourself, like, is it making sense in the context of this problem that the answer that we got is negative? And yes, it does make sense because, again, we have those fixed costs of $5,000. And if we're only selling 100 cups of boba, the revenue that we're generating from that is basically or sorry, the profits that we're generating from that is $250. So if you like combine those numbers, basically I am out $4,750 and I haven't made a profit. And so I would need to sell more cups of boba. Okay. And um, it's always nice to write a little sentence. So you could say if Mr. Kwan... sells 100 cups of boba, his profit will be negative $4,750. Just reading that kind of makes me sad. So let's see if I sell more if I can't make some more profit. So part C says, if Mr. Kwan sells 2,500 units, what will his profits be? So again, we're basically just evaluating P of 2,500. So if I plug that into my equation, then I have 2.5 times 2,500 minus 5,000. So 2.5 times 5,000 is 12,500 minus 5,000, so that is equal to 7,500. Okay, so if Mr. Kwan sells 2,500 cups of boba, his profits will be $7,500. So that's a lot better of a number. And one thing that you might be interested in is, well, how many cups of boba would I need to sell in order to break even? And that is basically the same thing as asking, how many cups of boba do I need to sell so that my profits end up being zero, and I've basically made the money back that I've put into it, but I haven't gained any more money than that, just the amount that I've put into it. And so that is called break-even analysis, and we will explore that idea later um, in this section.